Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending upon where you may be. I'm incredibly excited about this panel today. Um, High Tech TV is producing uh, this in partnership with uh, HFTP. And we're doing a quick recording, 45 minutes, give or take, uh, to discuss revenue management systems and the innovation that's taking place in that world. And we could not have better panelists than what we, what we have today. We have Paprika Le Bourgeois from Infor, Klaus Kolmayor from Ideas, and Josh Schaap from Roomdex. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask each one of them to introduce themselves and give us a little bit of uh, their own personal background and corporate background. And then we'll get right into the questions. Um, this is going to be super exciting because of the fact that uh, what I'm seeing in the marketplace today is mobile impacting revenue management. Revenue management is almost everywhere when it relates to the hotel industry now. And so we'll be diving a little deeper into those kind of questions and what's going to happen next. So Paprika, uh, please introduce yourself to the folks that are watching. Hello, everybody. So I'm Paprika. Uh, I have a background my career has always been in revenue management um so i did actually a, a master's in revenue management and then i worked for an ota company uh, then moved to the hotel industry which was always uh, a passion uh, and then i was very interested to get a revenue system uh, but it took ages so in the end i ended up working uh, for a revenue management system company easy rms which was bought uh, by infor um, and today i'm still working with our rms products uh, handling the support team, the su support and customer success, and also uh, involved in the whole product management uh, topic as well. That's great, Paprika. We're kind of closely uh, aligned because I was part of the team that did the due diligence on the Easy RMS acquisition oh, back really? in the day at Infor. So um, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Uh, Klaus, welcome. Thank you, Alan. Uh, thanks for having me and uh, appreciate um, high tech and uh, Hospitality Net for the invitation. Um, yeah, I'm Klaus. I've been with Ideas for many years, um, on and off. This is my second stint. I'm currently, um, I have multiple hats, chief evangelist, which is all about thought leaderships, talking to the industry like we're doing today. I am also the uh, chief development uh, officer, which uh, um, means I look after strategy for the company. I look after our technology partnerships and um, our longer term uh, roadmap working together with the marketing sales product teams and a bunch of other people so um, multiple heads in the company and i'm very excited to be here today for a great conversation thanks Klaus. mr shop welcome thank you uh mr young very nice to see all of you uh, very, thank you again also for having me on this uh, panel uh, i'm equally excited uh, to be honest, um, my history has been in hospitality software for 30 plus years. I spent uh, 18 years at Micros, where most of my time I was uh, leading the uh, product and engineering teams uh, of uh, the Opera products. Uh, so that's where I did a lot of revenue management or a bit of revenue management, integrations, PMS, all these kind of things. Uh, I left uh, to start a company called Stay in Touch PMS, which I sold in 2018 uh, to uh, CG. And then uh, last year, in the midst of the pandemic, we started a company called Roomdex, uh, which I'm founder and CEO, of co-founder and CEO with two of my uh, old time friends as well, uh, where we focus on the automation of uh, room, room upsell, early arrival, late departure and guest services. And with that, we've also integrated, uh, in our opinion, very good revenue management tactics around those aspects of the hotel products. And that's me. <clears throat> Thanks, thanks everyone for joining. And so let's let's dive right into it. I'm gonna, Paprika, ladies first, I'm gonna start off with you. Um, over the past 18, 24 months, it's, it's, it's been challenging, but you know, I think it's also been a time of innovation. So when you're talking revenue management and integrations, et cetera, and Infor, how has Infor spent the last little while um, enhancing its products, developing its products, getting ready for, you know, what's coming down the pipeline, which could be revenge travel, could be whatever everybody says it's going to be, right? Yeah. So it's been a, an exciting time for sure. Uh, and it's nice to be in a global company, you know, with customers all around the globe, because you can, we, we spotted that things were happening in Asia really quickly. And that's where we kind of did a, a bit of a shift and reassessed what we wanted to prioritize. And what we completely focused on is the whole forecasting part uh, that's key in a, in a revenue system. 
uh, it's kind of the basis of the optimization is how you're able to forecast. And, uh, you know, we were forecasting pretty okay uh, in the past, uh, but our methods were, you know, like most systems using a lot, relying a lot of, on historical data. So we had always in our heads to uh, do something new and be more agile in the, the forecasting methodology because we had noticed that needs, you know, uh, like when there was the volcano event uh, or events in uh, Hong Kong. But these were, you know, like, small, dedicated, and they don't always last that long. Uh, but with the pandemic, it was global, and it's just lasting and lasting and lasting. So we actually restarted and developed a brand, completely new methodology uh, of forecasting, uh, totally based on um, artificial intelligence, deep learning. Um, and that's been, uh, yeah, quite a, an adventure because uh, everything, every time you develop something linked to science, uh, it's not like, oh, it's just working like that. <laughs> uh, but the goal is to really be able to focus on um, on the books and, and trends in on the books, uh, recent trends and not just on historical data um, and also be a lot less reliant on manual input uh, from people. Uh, you know, not say, having people say, oh, that's this happening, this is this season, uh, that's what I expect, but having really the system, the intelligence, and we're able to do that because now computing power is, is massive. Um, so systems are able to calculate and get all that data, uh, put it in the calculator and provide a forecast that's adaptive uh, and react. So that was one of the big, big things. Um, and another aspect is also the whole user experience, the accessibility of our products. Uh, so putting in a lot more in-product education, uh, putting in, you know, in-product chats so people can contact us easily so that we're there. Um, having, you know, self-service uh, for, for things so customers don't have to rely on us to implement the system or to change stuff if they want to. Um, so that was, you know, another big uh, focus area so that when things come back, our products can be, you know, used very quickly. Um, and we also, the last one, my last point is we focused on a pricing tool uh, because, you know, we thought that when people do come back, uh, everybody will need uh, some kind of, you know, way to revenue manage. And some people don't have revenue managers, especially with the pandemic, a lot of jobs have shifted. Uh, so we want hotels to be able to get as much uh, opportunities as possible with any recovery going on. So we focused on a, you know, a bit of a more simple uh, tool that handles the pricing. So these were our, wow. uh, so that, that's kind a of lot. kept us busy. Yeah. I don't want to get too deep into deep learning, but that would be, uh, that's an entire it's session all to itself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Klaus, over to you. What was ideas, what has ideas been up to? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, obviously very, very challenging. And, and let's not forget that it's still very, very challenging in many countries around the world, right? Um, Asia is still uh, in a very difficult situation and, and so are many, many other places. Um, uh, kind of what we've been busy with very, very first, um, the first step that we did was um, make a quick decision that we're not going to lay off anyone or furlough anyone or cut anyone's pay um, in, internally. And that was a... Um, a, a very quick, I think in the first week, we made it, we made the call that this is the most important time to um, deal with our clients and, and, and uh, protect and serve our clients. And for that, we needed everyone full hands on deck uh, throughout the whole period. So we wanted to take the whole concern and, 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 um, and um, anxiety away from our people. So we made sure that everyone knew that they were completely protective and uh, taken care of. And then the first uh, four months or so really focused on uh, leveraging the data that we have from our 16,000 hotels around the world to understand what's going on and, and teach the system what's going on. So that right now, um, over the last 18 months, every two weeks, we go in, look at all the data we collect from millions and millions of data points around the world, and we um, fine tune the, uh, the algorithms and the science that uh, goes into the uh, pricing decisions. So um, we can see where pickup is happening, um, how recoveries are occurring, and we can then apply that uh, those trends and, the, and, and that data to other uh, countries and regions that are maybe not at the same cycle or maybe at a different stage of cycle. So we are uh, constantly monitoring what the systems are doing. 
Um, every two weeks, we go in and readjust and, and, and rebalance and fine tune our algorithms according to the countries and the regions and the stages of recovery they're in or, uh, or not recovery if uh, countries are closing down again. Um, so we're, we're able to do that through our team of 23 uh, sign, uh, um, uh, R&D and scientists that work uh, for us um, on a permanent basis. The second thing we did was roll out a new uh, tool that's called RefPlan because we realized that people need to be answering more questions uh, than ever before to more and more stakeholders. We now have the asset managers, the general managers, the owners, the banks, all asking revenue managers what's happening. Um, so RefPlan allows a uh, hotel to, um, rev to revenue manage, not revenue manage, but uh, uh, establish a total forecast for total revenue. Um, including your F&B forecast, your meetings forecast, and everything else that's going on in the hotel, um, and then do that automatically and feed the forecast into into various finance systems. Um, so we've heard from some of our clients that have implemented the system last year that they they would not have been able to iterate their forecasts and the budgets um, as quickly as as the market demanded it without a tool like that, which complete which which helps automate a lot of the the manual forecasting and budgeting processes. Um, and then actually it has been a really good year for us last year because we have seen a huge pickup in in uh, clients and a huge pickups in new contracts uh, because ultimately people realized that um, even in the times that we were in last year, demand is going to come back. And when demand comes back, the very, very forward looking companies made uh, significant investments in revenue management technology. So we're actually now looking at a, um, at a uh, record pipeline in terms of new hotels that are going to come on board in the next 18 months, and we're we're we're, see, we're going to see some very significant growth um, uh, throughout 2021 and 2022. That's awesome, Yos. How about yourself? I've been seeing uh, lots of announcements on LinkedIn of hotels uh, joining the fold. Um, what have you been up to over the past 18 months? Oh, you're on mute, Yos. <laughs> You get the grand price. Sorry, there you go. Get, yeah. you, you win. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not a Zoom call, but it's a Zoom joke, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> um, so contrary to Klaus, we didn't have to uh, fire anybody. We didn't have anybody last year, January, February, when we started. So we, we, we actually hired and founded a company amidst, amidst of COVID. So that's uh, that kept us very busy. Um, uh, we, we've been doing, I think, very well. I mean, I heard uh, the theme both from Klaus and, uh, and from Paprika. Automation is really important. It's, it's important to provide less screens, uh, more automation in the background so that hotels don't have to spend time to actually look at those screens and do, you know, flips and switches and all that stuff. So we founded Roomdex uh, with the intention to automate um, room upsell, early arrival, late departure, and also guest services. Uh, so that hotels don't have to do any administrative work anymore to keep those things sold, to get those things sold uh, and to deliver on them, which is also very important. And we also found that there's a huge gap. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about uh, revenue management today, and that's revenue management is mostly focused, you know, pre-booking and on the initial booking itself. And after that, uh, it kind of, you know, kind of fades away. There is not really any as far as we are aware, revenue management going on that's uh, <laughs> happening post the booking until a guest arrives into the hotel. So there's opportunity there that's being left on the table. So our tool is really focused on adding opportunity to create and increase the guest wallet share. So get more money from the guests uh, in a nice way so that the guest feels good about it and the hotel obviously has more revenue. Um, the product, uh, we started building it in uh, early last year. We went live at the first hotels in September 2020. Uh, we are now at close to 80 hotels in the process of being going live. We have extremely good success with all hotels. Even throughout COVID, most hotels uh, you know, that did not do well had enough occupancy to at least generate good revenue and additional revenue, which is sort of free revenue and high margin revenue by, uh, by, by offering digital upselling. And uh, we, we added in there also the, the concept of attribute-based attribute merchandising, which means we display the offer still in, in the sense of room categories that can be purchased, but they are positioned by attribute. So guests can see if they select a higher uh, room category, what kind of attribute they're getting. And th that we're going to talk about more of that, I think, in this, in this, uh, mm -hmm. this video today. Uh, that I think leads us down the road to, you know, to really put in place. We have we kind of put in place the foundation to do provide attribute-based selling, 
for, third, for, for us to uh, around upselling. So, I mean, we've been really busy with trying to get to full automation. That That's really what we wanted to do. And um, if you look at Hotel Tech Report, you look at the reviews from Roomdex, not as many as some of our competitors yet because we just started, but they're all 5.0. And most importantly, they all have the word words in it. No work, very easy to use, uh, no effort, effortless revenue driver. Uh, so it's kind of, that's what we set out to do. We, we want to build services that automate processes in the hotel. Right. And given my given my experience over the last 30 years uh, with my co-founder, Pierre and Denis, we kind of sat down and, and we thought about, if you look at all the hotel software that's out there, and I think Paprika mentioned a little bit already that is, there's a lot of screens and there's a lot of you know switches and admin work that still needs to be done. And there's very little necessarily, if you want machine learning going on in the back end that can automate, take away some of these processes. And that's that's the focus we want to take with Roomdex and, and kind of see, okay, we have enough data now. Why do we have human beings still make the decision? Is an early arrival available today or not? The machine can do that for the human being. And that's that's the process, uh, the, 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 the road we're taking uh, with Roomdex. So bringing automation and more revenue into hotels. Cool. Klaus, is, is there anything that you cannot revenue manage anymore in a hotel? Is there anything that you cannot revenue manage? Um, right. Um, well, Cause it's I getting could, pretty broad, argue, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I could argue, I could argue people are the, the largest cost centers in a hotel yeah. and ready manage people. So probably not. Um, okay, let's talk but, fixed <laughs> assets. <right? laughs> no, uh, no, you can, you no, know, ab absolutely. You know, we are, we're, we're very much in, and as yours mentioned as well, right? We're very much in the area of total revenue management. And we're approaching the area of total profit optimization very, very quickly, where we're not just moving on, you know, on revenue, but also on profitability and margins. So um, we have now the technology in place. We have the, um, the knowledge in place in terms of the science and the, uh, and the, and the algorithms, or what we call revenue science that we are able to understand demand and we understand uh, price sensitivity and we understand what customers want. And um, we are able to um, manage and optimize across the board, not just on the room side, which is always still the biggest, um, uh, the biggest revenue driver in uh, many, many hotels, definitely the biggest profit driver. Um, mm -hmm. But we are, we are deep, deep in the area of total revenue management, absolutely. What about you, Paprika? Yeah, I mean, in, in a hotel, indeed, I was trying to think, you know, revenue management is, uh, it works when you have uh, the fixed capacity or some kind of constraints. So apart from uh, the people, uh, things are, are, you know, they have a fixed capacity. It's not like because suddenly there's a lot of demands and I don't know, um, restaurants or meeting rooms that suddenly you're going to build <laughs> And your restaurants and in your meeting room, so you can optimize it uh, totally. And, and I guess the ultimate goal is to uh, optimize every single centimeter or uh, inch um, of your property, uh, and it should be feasible. Right, and you know, along those lines, Infor has a substantial food and beverage group, right? From yeah. dealing with hardware and software as well. And there have been yeah. restaurants that have tried to revenue manage their their, their menu items. And you know, I, I think I think at the end of the world, at the end of the world, at the end at the end of the day, I, I think there is going to be some way uh, where people are going to start being aware of the fact that if they go to a restaurant and and out of hours, so to speak, peak hours, that maybe they're going to get a better price. Who knows? You know, and, exactly. and uh, if we look back to telephones back in the day, you know, if you called after 11 o'clock, you got a cheaper rate than if you called at three o'clock in the afternoon. Now, mind you, that was a long, long time ago. But but I think people are getting a little bit more used to uh, price, you know, variability. So it's, it's quite interesting. Yos, what do you well, think? What's you driving know? it, sorry, just Alan, yeah. what's driving it, just look at the last 12 months and the, uh, and all of a sudden the emergence of QR codes in, the, in North America, right? In yeah. Asia, QR codes have been around forever. Um, and, and the digitization of the menu items and, the, and, and uh, getting rid of the, the paper menus uh, gives you a lot of opportunity to become more dynamic in your pricing. So that's yeah. driving a lot of that. Yeah, they get hotels had to get rid of paper everywhere, right? And that's it's a very good point. Yos, what you, you know, you kind of brought up attribute based selling. And when I'm talking about revenue managing anything, I think you could revenue manage all the attributes associated with the room as well. Can you? 
You could, but uh, before I go there, I want to go back to your previous question on uh, what you know, on revenue management. And yeah. uh, I think Klaus and Paprika said you can pretty much revenue management anything. Uh, I think there's also when you when you talked about F and B, there's a fulfillment that comes into play. And when I started my career, I was a food and beverage controller at uh, Hilton International in London, where I was doing some applying some menu engineering at the time, which basically means you look at which which menu item sells more than the others, or which one do you remove to actually you know, from the bottom up, reduce cost overall and increase uh, profit. And that leads me to, to the, I'm using that as an example because I think revenue management is, is, is getting very optimized and very good and determining the right price for the right room for the, at the right time. <clears throat> I think we're all getting pretty good at that. But the, the fulfillment part is, is, so, is somewhat lacking as it's not part of revenue management today. Um, <clears throat> and if so, that often makes you know make what happens often is that the, the standard room gets oversold. The, the, the room category, the next level, you know, gets uh, people get moved to that room category without being paying for it. They basically get moved because they need to get out of the the standard needs to be get empty so that people can all get a room, and then the higher level room is given away often for free. And I think the opportunity that revenue management systems also have, and we have, is to optimize the fulfillment so when you deliver on when you sell it set the price also make sure that you can deliver on that price and if you optimize fulfillment which basically in our opinion means you're going to be able to turn over rooms faster you're going to get people assigned to rooms for the for you know at a price rather than just moving them to another room category and therefore you you you, you increase the opportunity to sell more of the people of what people want um, at a higher price. So I think also in revenue management, there are opportunities on the bottom line to optimize the inventory and all that kind of stuff so that 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 you can offer more, which especially applies, for example, around early arrival and late departure. That's an area that's totally not revenue management today. Um, it's just basically a hotel decides today it's $50 to arrive early, whatever time you come, and tomorrow is the same unless somebody decides to change it. But right. if you can up if you can optimize it and relate link it to, for example, what did I pay for the room that I asked early arrival for? What's the value of that room today? And you look at all of those components, then you can optimize their price. Now the danger with early arrival and late departure is can I fulfill it? That's very often where operations gets into a fight with revenue management. Um, and that part of fulfillment is not automated today. But we can automate that today. Yeah. And if you automate that, you can further increase opportunities to sell rooms and other products. Um, right. So that's going back to your previous <laughs> question. No problem. <laughs> on, the, on the ABS uh, things, I mean, I mean, Klaus and I have been on various panels. Uh, last, uh, <laughs> A lot months, of them. And, and, and we've, yeah. we've, been, we've been talked about the topic. I think uh, George Rukas writes great articles about it. Uh, there is hotel chains that are looking to put this into the CRS. I think ideas, I cannot speak for EGRMS, but the proper can, proper can update us on that. We're all, all thinking towards that because we all think that, uh, you know, the sum of all pieces is greater than the whole basically uh so the idea the idea of attribute best selling is is that of course i do need a bed and a, and a shower in my room but everything else is kind of optional so if i decide i want a uh ocean view and i want a balcony and i want a coffee machine and those are the three things i buy and that determines um the price i'm going to pay for the room i'm going to get uh, i think that's very attractive opportunity to explore um we we see that you know if you put if you put attributes in, a, in, a, in an organized way on, a, on an upsell offer, it's very easy for hotel guests to understand they're going from here to there. Uh, so, and that seems, it seems to work very well for us. So we think that if we can offer those components uh, to the, in a user interface to the guest and or through other channels, we can if we can provide a third party uh, API that kind of feeds that information to a CRS or a, or a booking engine, for example, that there is a lot of opportunity to further increase the wallet share of that you can get from the guest. And you can give the guest even closer to what they're actually looking for. Mm -hmm. Now, that also brings one problem. Now you have to think about fulfilling not only the room category, but in some cases, also the, the physical room. And right. that's an area we are um, about to get very good in as well. Fabrica, you know, he, he mentioned maybe this is in your on your radar. Is this something that Infor is looking at as well? 
<clears throat> yes, totally. I mean, it's, you know, everyone is talking about it and, and it makes a lot of sense. So if I can, maybe I'll just try to summarize the millions of thoughts in a very simple way. Uh, sure. I mean, for me, this attributes based uh, pricing or selling is uh, important for two things. The goal is to well, enhance, you know, the experience for the guests, because in the end, it's allows allowing them to choose something that's better for them. Uh, so if mm -hmm. I put myself in the shoes of a guest, it would, I would actually love for it to exist. And it will increase revenues for sure, because uh, if people can choose, they will pay more. Uh, people are willing to pay for stuff that they want. Um, and then the, the key for these things to work, it's not a black or white, like that's how it's going to work, uh, because you need to be careful not to give too many choices. So it has to be limited in a way, and it has to be extremely clear, transparent of, you know, what is it that I'm paying as a guest, depending on what I choose. Um, and it should be also very easy to select stuff. So it's the whole experience that, you know, will make it work. So that's from, is it worth it? Yeah, this could definitely work, but I don't think pricing every single little item is probably the solution. Maybe we need to go something a bit bigger and, you know, think of type of guests. If you think like your family, uh, with kids, there's lots of stuff that you're very interested in, uh, like you like to know in advance, and that you would pay for to have the the you know the confidence, the comf you know to feel comfortable and to look forward to your holiday, um, and you would pay for it. So you know by having the different guest types um, and what they want uh, and why they're traveling, that could help. But then, so that's the the theory part of it, uh, or the guest perspective. But then you have the how would you actually revenue manage that? And for that, well, you need data, which is a little bit the challenge today because it doesn't exist yet in most places. Not a lot of systems do attributes uh, in terms of PMS, mm -hmm. etc. Yep. Uh, because you need the data to then be able to track that, create forecasts, track the demands, and then optimize and you know give recommendations on pricing and, and anything else. Right. But it's a super interesting topic. Mm. Yeah. Klaus, how about how about in ideas? Um, well, as, as, as Joost knows and, and others, we're, we're right. pretty passionate for um, the last, um, I guess, three or four years. We've had many, many conversations um, also with Joost's co-founders that go way back, maybe five years <laughs> back. Uh, so uh, we've been we've been involved in many of these conversations over the over the years. I think what what I see now realistically, you know, we're probably two years off um, from getting not not from our side, but from the ecosystem side to get some real traction. I know of a, a number of commitments that have been made between hotel companies and, and technology partners to have uh, attribute based pricing implemented um, within the next eighteen months at at a at a at a high level. Um, so starting slow and then rapidly advancing, and um, realistically, that's going to be driven by by the big chains because all the big chains have ma have invested uh, a lot of money and are making um, a lot of inroads in it. From our perspective, we know how to solve it. Uh, we know how to address it. We know how to price dynamically, price different attributes. Kind of, we have the methodology, kind of in our in our heads, uh, in our science, not in my head, but the the twenty <laughs> scientists that we have on our team, in their heads. Um, so it's not a from a from a revenue management perspective, it's not a big problem to solve. Um, it's the, the the difficult part is the uh, fulfillment, as you said, as well as the uh, interaction between the revenue management system, the property management system, and the selling systems, right? The booking engines right. and CRSs to make sure that the data flows freely and that the guest ultimately gets a better experience than they would have gotten otherwise. Yeah, agreed. So you know, it, I. It's kind of the Costco effect, right? Which is to me the most amazing dynamic I've ever seen in my life. You walk into Costco to to purchase one item and you walk out with a dining room set, right? <laughs> and and it's just human nature to want to be able to go in and say, Oh, well, I can if I can buy that now and it seems that it, like the price is right, I'm gonna take it. So I, I definitely think that that it's incredibly viable and, and we need to get to a shopping cart environment. Because uh, that's how people are used to purchasing things today, except things from the hotel industry. It's really kind of interesting. Even purchasing cars, it's down to you know different preferences. So, completely agree. Um, Yos, one of the things that you did at your previous company, Stay in Touch, was focus on mobile. Um, you know, in that guest interaction environment. But obviously, revenue management is is looking at mobile as a way to um, 
you know, deal with all of the complexities that are that one has to uh, face every day. How how do you think mobile is going to affect revenue management from an operations perspective, and and possibly even from changing different offers within your world? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I think in my world or in our world, so to speak, the um, there's a big advantage that kind of goes back to what you just mentioned about Costco. You go in with one and you come out with 10 products. Um, the advantage of mobile is that once the guest has booked the reservation, which they potentially may do at their home, at their desktop, there is a time frame from booking to arrival where you can kind of play the uh the hallway from Costco and send out additional offers to the guests between booking and arrival, which can increase the overall spend you get from that guest and therefore the overall ADR, which can have an effect then on um, on the revenue management system making its decision for the next booking that comes in. Um, if you do that on mobile, a guest will, once they have booked, probably do the rest on their mobile a mobile phone because they're going to get an email or a text or some CRM message that allows them to you know add something, buy something, upgrade, uh, get breakfast, all these kind of things. So they're all playing a role in getting more value out of the guest, getting more revenue out of the guest, and therefore play a, play a role into determining price. I think from an operational point of view, and I've seen this uh, advertised by multiple RMS systems. The I mean, I think it's maybe. A, I think there is more opportunity to manage the process of the RMS system from anywhere at any given time. So you can be more ad hoc if you want to be. But I would also like to see what Klaus and Paprika have to say about that. Because if, as, as Paprika mentioned earlier, the focus is on taking away actions from the hotel mm -hmm. to having the machine do it for the hotel, which, by the way, I think is the way it can be best achieved. Because a machine can make much faster decisions than a human being in general, uh, especially when there's a lot of data behind it. So I'm curious to say, to hear what the two of them have to say about the mobile aspect. Agreed. So Klaus, over to you. Um, yeah, the way we look at it is it's not about mobile versus desktop. It's about the level of interaction and the level of sophistication a person has to interact with the revenue management system. We've always been a decision system. So for the last 30 years when, or 35 years, uh, when, when our uh, president and, and COO founded the company, um, they made a decision to make sure that the system does make decision and um, the system can run with minimal human interaction. So that's always been our guiding principle from, uh, from the very beginning of the company. What we're now seeing is traditional revenue management systems have been focusing on the very sophisticated user, the revenue manager who has a lot of time to look for graphs and charts and, and run reports and build their own Excel tools like I have 25 years ago. But that's not the reality anymore, right? You have a owner operator at the, um, at the roadside, at a roadside motel that maybe has five or 10 minutes to interact with pricing and just wants to know what's changed and if the system is making the right decisions with them. And so that's at the, that's on one end of the spectrum, a person that doesn't really know revenue management other than I need to make sure my prices are right and doesn't have the time to sit in front of a computer. And on the other spectrum, you still have the revenue manager or the, the, the central revenue management team now that needs to understand how they can most effectively drive 20, 30, 40 properties from a central location. Right, and and we want to cater for, or we are catering for the entire spectrum. So if you're today an owner operator, a franchisee, or if you're an independent hotel, um, you can have that mobile experience. And we spent the last four years to to build a complete new platform that's currently being implemented um, to cater specifically to that limited service and economy segment, and that's a mobile first experience. Um, and then on the higher end, you want to have that full experience that a revenue management expert wants and needs to answer the questions from many, many stakeholders across the organization. So it's not so much about mobile versus desktop. It's about giving the people the choice according to the time commitment and the sophistication that they have to interact with the system in different ways. So irrespective of guest or employee or, or, or colleague, we're all trying to give people what they want, right? And so, right. Paprika, right. what, what's your what's your take on on mobile mobility and, and its effect? Yeah, I 100% agree with uh, what everything Klaus just said. Uh, we have totally the same vision. Uh, if we think, okay, of, well, then we'll just go on to the next yeah. question. No, no, I'm kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, but if we think of uh, an RMS on mobile, 
uh, from that perspective, it, it has to exist. I mean, it's been a must since a few years, to be honest, now even more with pandemic, with more people working from home, it's even more needed, but to be honest, it was needed before that. Uh, and here the goal is not, as, as Klaus was saying, not to replicate everything you have in a desktop version, but to, to do something that's really, what is the needs from a mobile app? And the logic is that the system can run on its own, right? You don't need to interact with it. But if you do, what are the stuff you need to do? Uh, and what we've realized with our mobile apps is that actually there's massive adoption from not the revenue managers, but from GMs, owners, and they love it because they can see their few KPIs, what price, pricing is being sold at. Uh, and it's actually allowed to uh, increase the usage and you know putting the RMS more central into the overall organization, which is beneficial for everybody at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I yeah, think Alan, just one, yeah. just one thing. Sorry, kind of. I was just thinking maybe the question should also become from the consumer side, right? So, um, yep. on the consumer side, I think there is an, a huge opportunity, like Jos mentioned, because uh, consumers interact with the mobile phone very, very, very differently than the desktop, right? It becomes more of a conversation, and and more of a more of a, a continuous dialogue and engagement with the consumer. And uh, the only company that I've seen doing that well at the moment is Hopper that that enters into a dialogue with the consumer throughout the customer journey and tries to sell them different things at different uh, stages in the customer journey. Um, and they don't even go down where, where Roomdex, Roomdex is going, right? Roomdex uh, with, with the with the pre-arrival, post-booking right. pre-arrival engagement, right? So there's there's a massive amount of opportunity to generate more revenue and higher levels of satisfaction by having capabilities to engage differently. Yeah. I would even say if you don't have, if a hotel doesn't have a good mobile experience, you're losing revenue. Uh, I mean, because uh, yeah. you know, if you're just relaxing, you're checking your phone, you're thinking of your holiday. Uh, if it's easy, you will go ahead and book. If it's not, you go and see somebody else uh, for a lot of people. Yeah, I completely agree. It, it, you know, for me, simplicity is key. I, it, not that I want to sh do big shout outs to OTAs, um, but, you know, I, I went to Hungary a few years ago and booked the entire trip going through Germany, Austria, and Hungary, all via booking.com. It was fabulous. And, and I was pinged with, not only was I pinged with offers, but I was also pinged with interesting things to do in the area. So it was, it was really interesting. Um, you know, one of the things we're talking about all this innovation, I think it's awesome. And I think the, the industry is, is definitely up to it. I remember the revenue management in its early days where, you know, if you talked automation, sometimes people would, would curl into a small ball. Uh, and, and so, but what are the things that are impacting innovation detrimentally uh, in our space right now? And Yos, I'm going to start with you on this. Um. I think that's predominantly automation at this point of time. Uh, you know, everybody is looking to find uh, tools that can minimize labor because obviously post COVID there's an issue with uh, labor around mm -hmm. pretty much around the world. I think I spoke to some hotels in Holland, United States and you know, all uh, Dubai, they're all looking for people they can't find. Uh, I think COVID has finally hit, hit, hit a home run for a lot of hoteliers that are thinking the old way that they need to see people in person and shake hands and that, that the check-in experience is the reason why guests come to a hotel. I think they finally realized that's actually not the case. Um, they, they just want to have a good stay and a pleasant stay and a comfortable stay in a nice hotel room in a nice location. And they do want to be treated well, but they don't need to have to go through a 10 minute check-in experience, where they have to provide all kinds of uh, administrative information. I think that came home in the last, you know, one and a half year. When, when I had stay in touch, I tried to, to get to that the last, um, you know, the last six years. It was initially fairly hard to sell, to bring to attention that it would be good to have a system that does mobile check in and mobile check out. Now that has become a little easier. Uh, it's still, I think, fairly hard to achieve. Um, so I think automation is, is what, what people are going to look for. So, and of course, on top of automation is how do I increase revenue? And on the bottom of that is how do I reduce costs? Right. And I think we mentioned a few of those throughout our last uh, 40 minutes or so already. Um, you know, first try to get more out of the of the guest by offering more in different components, then increase the price if you can in a fair way, of course, uh, and then of course try to optimize so that you can better fulfill and actually don't have to, uh, you know, go back and, and correct too many things. 
Right. So I think automation in, in, around fulfillment is definitely going to be a key factor going forward. How about you, Paprika? What are, are there any stumbling blocks related to innovation in our space? So uh, yeah, there's a few. <laughs> um, if we could maybe summarize them, uh, I would say, say in three different areas. So first is the technology, um, you know, how systems talk to each other, uh, what data we can get, what output we can send back um, so that actually whatever our science uh, scientists think about can actually happen in real life. Uh, that's one of the biggest challenge, uh, challenges. And, and there's also how systems are interest, intrinsically built, like uh, PMSs, et cetera. They're based on room types, room categories, rate codes, market segments, which, which is fine, right? But it, it gives a certain uh, constraint uh, in a way. So that's one, the technology. Um, then there, uh, the, the second category would say, I would say culture or just being human. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lack of trust in, in a system that's fully automated, which is not a bad thing. It's totally natural. Uh, and, you know, wanting to over control things um, and understand everything. But if you want a systems to be very granular and be fully automated at some point, there's a need to, to let go and trust, um, which, you know, goes in different ways. But that's a little bit of a, a stumbling block. Um, and the third one, which is in a way it's quite general, uh, is, the, is linked to companies and how companies operate, uh, is we usually look at, you know, short term financial focus, uh, you know, how did we do this month? How did we do this quarter? How did we do this year? And, and that usually blocks a bit of creativity, innovation, uh, because there's a risk of losing money when you do something you've never, never done before. Yeah, So very true. Klaus, you know, you've been around the industry as long as I have and, and yours and, and uh, you know, we've, we've seen a, a myriad of challenges. What do you think are the ones that are really impacting our space right now? Well, I'm actually quite excited about the space we're in right now. I don't think we've ever seen so much innovation and, and um, yeah. new stuff coming out, you know, technology is getting cheaper and cheaper and, and entrepreneurs and innovators like Jos and his team um, who've all known for many, many years are just doing fantastic stuff. So I'm, I'm actually pretty excited. The number one thing that's stopping us from going faster in innovation today is access to data and the ability to send that data to other places. I can't tell you how many times we would love to do things, but because we can't have access to the data that we want, or we cannot send the data to a system that can absorb it, we cannot do what we could do um, and to push the industry forward. Right. Um, an example is we've been working the last couple of years on a project to get um, uh, closer to the CRM systems and integrate, um, you know, revenue management and marketing automation tools um, more more closely. And um, it's just impossible to get the right data to make the right decisions and then send those decisions back into the um, into other systems. Right. So the, the the number one priority that stifles innovation right now is the inability to get the right data and then be able to efficiently send that data back to wherever it needs to get sent to. If that could be resolved, and, and I know there are some efforts by, big, by, by, by the big technology companies to make it easier to interchange data, but if that gets resolved, um, it'll be unlimited. Cool. All right, we're almost coming to the end. I just want to go around the table and any last thoughts? Uh, Yos, I'll start with you. Last thoughts. Um, I think for, you know, this is, I think for hoteliers, I would definitely think about how can I maximize revenue by a, of course, having a revenue management system and find also ways. How can I, you know, what, what opportunities can I use to have more selling points to the, to, towards the guest post booking. So going back to your Costco uh, corridor story, I think that's really key because that's really a, fairly easy way to get uh, more revenue out of a guest without the guest being upset, assuming you can fulfill whatever you more sell uh, to the guest. I mean, a pretty simple example this morning, I was talking to uh, a non hotelier but basically a potential guest who said, yeah, when I book my room, that's just how much money I'm willing to spend. But then as I get close to arrival, I kind of forgot how much I spend. And then that $25 extra, eh, why not? I'll just buy it. Right. So that's that's like now you have instead of 200, you have $225 out of a guest and you can keep going like that. So right. that's it's a very simple principle that technically speaking works very well. So I would definitely focus on RMS, automation, 
try to create more digital touch points before arrival uh, and, and get those in place as soon as possible before the full business comes back. Great. Klaus? <clears throat> Yeah, I think the biggest uh, the biggest opportunities right now are for um, uh, the expansion of revenue management into other areas, as I mentioned, right? Revenue, uh, total revenue, total profit optimization. Um, so expanding it into more revenue areas and then making the revenue management principles or revenue science available to more people in an organization. Um, and you talk about marketing and uh, meeting and events, you talk about sales, you talk about distribution, loyalty, um, F and B. Um, and I also think that, um, you know, revenue management is being applied more and more in, you know, we talk a lot about hotels, but let's think about the broader uh, area of accommodation, not just uh, right. hotels. So any, anytime anyone wants to sleep somewhere or stay somewhere, um, we should be able to optimize that and, um, and bring revenue science to bear. Perfect. And Paprika, last but not least. So, uh, I guess to the hoteliers who are watching, uh, I mean, today the panel is about RMS innovations. So, first, uh, you know, I would recommend to see where do you stand today? You know, do an honest audit. Okay, where am I today? Uh, how, much, how much space am I today revenue managing in my property? And uh, how am I doing that? Am I using a system? Is it someone doing it? Is it the GM, you know, just to have a, a kind of a vision of where you're at and then see what would be the next step to improve that uh, for some people and maybe to get an RMS uh, for some others and maybe to actually use better the RMS uh, and for some others and maybe to go beyond bedrooms and start revenue management and managing meeting space so that would be a, a bit the recommendation see what is your next right. step for you Makes a lot of sense. Well, you'll shop from Roomdex, Klaus Kolmayor from Ideas, and Paprika Le Bourgeois from Infor. Thank you so very much for an amazing session, and I hope to see you in a few weeks in Dallas. Likewise, yes. thank Looking you. Looking forward to it. Thank you so All much. Right. Cheers, we really appreciate it. Thanks again. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.